Creating an idea for an animated show must be so easy. Oh, Hef, you know nothing about it. No, really, I'll show you. It could be about, uh, hmm... Deli meats! Hello, Mr. Baloney! <gasps> Look out for Mr. Butcher Life! Oh, no, get away from me! Ah! <laughs> hey, Home Slice! Hef, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. We've all heard the phrase, write what you know. It typically means that when you're creating some art, writing a story, composing some music, what have you, try putting your unique experience into the work. Provide your individual viewpoint. What that often translates into is a bunch of artists making art about themselves making art. What's that, Stephen King? Your book is about an author living in Maine? I suppose that's a quirky coincidence. Wait, are you actually writing yourself into the Dark Tower? No, King, stop! It's only natural for artists to find inspiration in the spaces they work. So every once in a while, you'll get a piece of animation about making animation, and why it's hard and soul-crushing and you should never do it. We've talked about an episode like that pretty recently, Stippy's Cartoon Show, in which the show's main characters make their own crappy cartoon, deal with producers, and discover just how hard making animation is. It was funny, but it was also a little bit bite the hand that feeds you. But I guess Nickelodeon didn't mind that too much, because two years and two weeks later, it happened again. It's a credit to your genius! A triumph of your will! It's okay! Go away, you toadies. Whoa, yes sir, oh god, I'm out of here, oh yes! Originally airing on January 21st, 1996, Wacky Deli is the 10th episode of Rocco's Modern Life's third season, the 36th episode overall. It was written by show creator Joe Murray and series regular Martin Olson, with the first half directed by future Phineas and Ferb creators Jeff Swampy Marsh and Dan Povenmire, and the second half directed by future SpongeBob SquarePants creator Steven Hillenberg and Citizen Dog comic strip creator Mark O'Hare. A very all-hands-on-deck production. A still pre-transition Rachel Bighead has just wrapped up production of the final episode of The Fatheads, a hugely popular cartoon based on Rachel's bickering parents. Rachel is excited. She's free from animation obligation and can now focus on her other artistic passions. Or so she thinks. But the executives have a different idea. You owe us a pilot for another show. What? Just check your contract. You'll see we get one more show before we let you go. But, but... Have your new show on our desk by next Monday. Got it? Being forced to create a whole new cartoon show, Rachel can't enjoy the final episode party being held by her parents and some of the Fathead's biggest fans, Rocco, Heifer, and Filbert. Heifer suggests that coming up with a new cartoon should be easy, and suggests one that takes place in a deli with deli meats and cheeses as characters. That's obviously a very bad idea. And a very bad idea just might be the ticket. If Rachel produces a show that's absolutely terrible, the executives just might drop her from her contract. So she turns to Rocco and friends and offers them the chance to bring their deli cartoon to life. Rocco, Heifer, and Filbert get to the studio and get to work, but quickly discover that not only is animation a lot of hard physical labor, but having a bunch of creatives in one room, butting heads, trying to put their ideas on top of everyone else's, is somehow even worse. Titled Wacky Deli, the cartoon ends up a mishmash of tones and incoherency, combined with terrible animation and no sense of plot. As Rachel hoped, it's quite terrible. Hello? I am the cheese. I am the best character on the show. I am better than both the salami and the bologna combined. But then again, there's no accounting for taste because the executives love it. And then it airs on television and the general public love it as well. Rachel becomes a celebrity mobbed by adoring fans and Rocco and friends continue to produce episode after nonsense episode. Rachel attempts to sabotage things, suggesting they do things like air an unmoving shot of a jar of mayonnaise for half an hour, but that just makes the show more popular. Such as funny, the critics say, but a true artistic masterpiece. That is until Rachel, fed up with fighting against the success, decides to embrace Wacky Deli and try to make it the best show it can be. It's immediately canceled. The episode ends with Rachel escaping to the desert to make her art, where Rocco and friends will end up finding her in the special Rocco's Modern Life, Static Cling. 
Wacky Deli and Stimpy's Cartoon Show are definitely of a kind. Both Nicktoons dealing with the strains of the animation industry, the excessive workload, the tastelessness of television executives, and the trends towards absurdism that, well, shows like Ren and Stimpy and Rocco's Modern Life seem to represent. Like really, how far off is Wacky Deli from Rocco itself? It's the differences between these two cartoons where things get interesting. Wacky Deli is, pound for pound, less cynical than Stimpy's cartoon show, more about artistic frustrations than frustrations with the system. There are fewer gags about grind and burnout, and more gags like Rachel trying to use a giant laser to melt the polar ice cap and flood the studio. It's more cartoony in that way, whereas Ren and Stimpy opted for more shocking imagery, dragged out pacing, and gross out humor. The messaging on Stimpy's cartoon show did get a bit muddled in the game of telephone that was its production, but it was, first and foremost, a cartoon made out of spite. John Kay is a spiteful man, on top of being a genuinely bad human being, and Stippy's cartoon show has spite for days for the people in charge. Wacky Deli is also frustrated, but more out of a desire to move on, to do something different. And the same could be said of show creator Joe Murray, who, it should be noted, was also the voice of Rachel Bighead, effectively Murray's surrogate character. Hey, Murray, if you've stumbled onto this video, thank you so much for Rocco's Martin Life. You made a great cartoon. I'm going to get into some of your personal history here, some of the hard parts. You already know this story, so this is a good point to jump off. This will dig at old wounds. In 1992, while Rocco's Martin Life was still in pre-production, Joe Murray's wife, Diane, committed suicide. Deep in his contract with Nickelodeon, Murray started the show in a terrible, difficult headspace. There were many unresolved issues when I moved to LA to work on the show, both emotionally and physically. I felt like I left to run a marathon with my pants around my ankles. I figured I would work on a season of Rocco, because I really didn't believe it would go on longer, and then move back to the Bay Area and clean up the loose ends I had left hanging. Well, the show got picked up for another season, and then another. It's obviously something no one would wish on anyone. Now, I'm not suggesting that the events of Murray's life are in any way analogous to the goofy story of Wacky Deli, but Murray started Rocco's Martin Life already at a creative distance to it that grew with every continued extension. It's a certain background radiation that can be felt in Rachel's character, that sense of being trapped within work obligations when you really, really don't want to be. The motivations are totally different, but the emotions are similar. If the Rocco fan wiki is to be believed, there was also a running joke among the crew about how Murray was trapped within production. After Wacky Deli and the rest of season 3, Murray would finally pull back to an executive producer role, with Steven Hillenberg taking over as the creative director for Rocco's fourth and final season. Wacky Deli is not a secretly coded dark industry parable, and it doesn't have any of the real animosity you feel coming off of Snippy's cartoon show. It is, at its most negative, a scratching post for the people behind the show to poke and prod their frustrations out on without really damaging anything. And it's genuinely fun. It's a fun half hour of television that I have often quoted over the years. I am the cheese indeed. And Nickelodeon has had a lot of fun with it too. As an April Fool's gag in 2013, T-Nick promoted a lost episode of Rocco's Modern Life, only for it to be an unmoving shot of a jar of mayonnaise for half an hour. I can respect that. So yeah, I much prefer Wacky Deli to Stippy's cartoon show. It's more concise, it's more fun, it's more playful, and it's much more human. Actually, now that I think about it, that's how I feel about Rocco's Modern Life as a whole compared to Red and Stimpy. But, 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 that's a discussion for another day. This was just a sample. <laughs>